What's up guys? I'm Envy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be going over 12 fun fall palettes and talking way too much. So if that is something that you're interested in, keep on watching. This video is in collaboration with these lovely individuals. I will have their Instagram and YouTube's linked down below. My cat has decided to join us. Everyone say hi to Maxie. <laughs> my hair is fluffy today. Cannot wait to get my perm in two days. Watch me be like hyping up this perm and then like for one reason or another I can't get it. Devastating. So the first palette that I want to talk about is my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. She looks like this. I love this palette. I'm pretty hesitant to use this on my channel too often because it is a very expensive eyeshadow palette, but I feel like it's very all-encompassing when it comes to like fall tones. Fall is a very good time for both like warm, cool, and neutral tones. Although like any tone of makeup can be worn at like any point throughout the year. But like, look at like ugh, this like warm side and then the like olives with like this neutral and the cool and uh, I think this is just a very good, it's, this palette has a lot of variety without being like a rainbow palette. Like, yes, there's a red, but it's more of like a cranberry. Yes, there's this yellow matte, but it's more of like a mustard shade. And then like a gold and, you know, like bronzes and oranges that are more mattes. And then the olives and even the blues. Like these are two matte blues. I, per I hate that there's two of these shades in here, but we're not going to talk about it. But they're navy. And then like up here it's like more of like a royal blue shimmer and even here it's more of like a green toned teal shimmer and i just feel like everything in this palette plays so well into the theme of fall i would have to say that this would be my favorite like fall tone palette that i could use all year long just whenever i want to but i just get such good fall vibes from this i love this palette this doesn't look as loved as it is and I'm okay with that because it's Natasha Denona and it's expensive so I overall just feel like this palette ties you know the entire color story and this is a this is a big palette there are a lot of shades in here and I get onto Morphe for like their 35 shade palettes but I've, I don't think Natasha Denona has ever come out with anything with this many shades since this or before this but I, I don't feel like it's crowded. I don't feel like there's, I don't feel like there's too many repeats with like other palettes, like maybe the Zendo, but that's because almost everything feels like it's been repeated in Zendo, but this was before Zendo, you know? So this, this is just like the quintessential Natasha Denona palette for me because it's a stunning formula. You get a very wide variety of shades, tones, formulas. I just think this is, like the best fall palette, but I also have other fall palettes, but I just, I just really love this palette. And am I crazy? Am I crazy to think that this is fall? If I'm crazy, if, if anything in this like video does not represent fall to you guys, I'd love to have like polite discourse. This is like the A1 fall palette for me, if I'm going to be honest. Like the, fir the first palette I thought of whenever I was given this prompt was this palette. So very, very excited to have it. Very, very excited to use it a little more often, hopefully, if I can get over that price tag and advertising that on my channel. But away she goes. <laughs> Next is my Lois Cosmetics Meet Me in the Underworld palette. Now this palette's like whole main theme, like thematically is fall. Kind of, well, well, this is the, sh this is the tale of Orpheus and Eurydice in a palette, but the tale of Orpheus and Eurydice also kind of goes hand in hand with the tale of Hades. I should probably be holding this up instead of just fiddling with it. This palette also ties in with the story of Hades and Persephone. So Persephone, if you don't know, is a shade in this palette. No, she isn't. Just Hades is. Never mind. Persephone is the goddess of spring. So there was eternal summer on earth until Hades uh, decided that in layman's terms, she wanted him to be his wife. So whenever she went to the underworld, everything died and that's how we got winter. So 
This is how uh, Greek mythology kind of explains the seasons, where the first fall happened while Persephone was being led into the underworld and everything was slowly dying behind her as she left the plane. And then spring happens as she returns and she brings back the sun, for lack of better words, she brings in like the spring and then summer is whenever she's here, like fully partying, ha hooting, and hollering. And then winter is whenever she's fully down in the underworld with her husband. You look at this and you think, ah, it is a mauve and green palette. But if you take like a deeper look at it, there's only like four greens. And there's only like two mauves, if you want to include these shimmers, four mauves. So that's only like half the palette. And then the rest of the palette are like reds and browns and purples and a nude and a gold that kind of can make everything mesh together. I love having greens and reds in one like palette because they're complementary or excuse me, are they complementary? Contrast, they're contrasting I guess on the color wheel but that makes them pop when they're on your eyes. And I just love that there's like a gold and like just a nude to help bring everything. Oh, I love this palette i feel like in a fall palette you need to have like a nude a gold a green and a red that is just what i feel you need in like a quintessential fall palette not every one of these palettes has that because i know that not everybody wants greens and reds in their eyeshadow so i try to make it more like of an all-encompassing list but for me and like a love of color, I kind of feel like this is like the quintessential like fall color story if you're going to maybe not have as many shades as the Natasha Nona Metropolis, but if you do like color, I think this is an excellent, excellent fall palette. I have done a look using just the greens on one eye and then a look using just like the mauves and reds on the other eye, and I thought it was a great formula. I'll have every video that I'll talk about or any <laughs> any video with any palette in this video that I've posted, I'll have a little info card up, so feel free to check that out. But I love this palette. Next is actually the newest palette available from this list, and it is the Natasha Denona Midi retro. I love that these are called midi palettes because there's like the mini, the full-sized, and then the mid-sized. And I don't know why I love words that could be applied to like sedans with makeup. You know, it's my mid-sized Natasha Denona palette. I don't, that just tickles me, honestly. But I like this palette. I actually have two palette comparisons filmed and ready to go. There's kind of like a time crunch on this, so I know that those won't be out before this video because, or excuse me, there's a time, kind of a time crunch on this video to get, so, cause we all have a deadline. So we're all gonna post it because you know, collab. So the comparison videos will probably be out in like the next couple of weeks. I'm really, really like pre-filming because uh, I'm getting my hair done at for a perm. So I can't film for a couple days cause I can't get my hair wet for a couple days. I'm going to be moving. So I won't be able to film and just yada, yada, yada life stuff. Let's get back into the makeup. <laughs> This is everything that I wanted Modern Renaissance to be. Do not smack me in the face. But I, there's more shimmers, there's more shades, there's more tones, but they all kind of fall into the same theme. And I just, I, okay, I like warm toned browns and I like warm, I like warmer tones. And this has warmer tones. Are they mauve? Yes, but they're warmer toned mauves and that's just what I go for. I have a couple of cooler toned mauve palettes and I'm just not really drawn to use them as much unless it's specifically for a comparison, but I love this palette. And the two times that I've used it, I, I've achieved like blendability, 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 is that what it is? I think that this palette released at the perfect time. It released like earlier in September, which is like right whenever people are starting to get into fall things. And I just, there are cooler toned, there are neutral tones and there are warm toned options. So for like any part of any of the seasons that you feel, oh, I want like a cooler eye look, you can use like these three. Maybe you want a splash of purple. There's that, there's that. It's just, there's so many options and I absolutely love the names because this is the retro palette. So of course they have the shade 
Psychedelic, Mod, Go Go, Jude, Hey Jude, like, like Hey Jude, Groove. I love that. I'm so happy that they didn't do essentially what they did with the glam palette where there were like three inner corners, you know, four crease, sh no, shades named crease. I just, I really, really enjoy this palette. I think that this is the best midi palette that Natasha Denona has come out with since she started doing the midi palettes. I, I, I loved bronze and I love this one. I have Glam and it's all right. I'm not bothering with Zendo because I'm sure I have those shades in that palette a thousand times over, but this one is standout and I would implore upon everyone that if these, I keep opening and closing it, that if these are your tones and you have the capital because this is $65, get this palette. Next is the Whatever palette from ColourPop. There's going to be a fair amount of ColourPop because that is what I have mostly in my collection, but this is your average everyday run-of-the-mill fall palette. There are reds, purples, golds, oranges, the whole nine yards, but the formula in like the shimmers, Not Okay, TTYN, and Ditch Neo, Not Okay is like my favorite copper shade ever. I like this more than the copper shades in my Natasha Denona bronze palette. I love this Not Okay shade. I love this pressed glitter, but I love Natasha Denona pressed glitters. That being said, there is a plet pressed glitter. Uh, there aren't any of like the mattes with glitter in them. So like if you don't use mattes with pressed glitter, foiled or straight up glitters, you only wouldn't want to use Duh. That's only like the one shade out of all of them, which is fine by me, and I don't, but I don't know if it's fine by you, but I am currently using this as a companion palette to my Pan Mat palette, which is my Good As Gold palette. I have said palette too many times in that sentence. And I really, really like it as a companion palette. I think the golds, since there isn't just a straight gold shimmer, I think the straight gold shimmers in there and the more mustardy blend, blend, blending, and the more mustardy blending shade Trooper, just they, I feel like these sh palettes really accent each other. So I've been using this a lot. I have this more, in my crease and outer corner today. I've used both of them, but if you just want a red palette, I would say go for this one. Don't even go for, they claim that they have a red palette. What is it? The, the, all that palette. That's not really a red palette. This is a red palette. This is a red matte. This is a darker red matte. This is a red shimmer. And this is a red to orange duochrome shimmer. Here's a little like purple to brighten it up. Here's more of like an orange, but it still is like a red toned orange to keep the red. This is their red palette. This is their like quintessential red palette. More than their nine pan red palettes, this is their like red palette for me. I just love it. I, I've gone on, I hate that it doesn't have a mirror, but I also think that the packaging is super cute. I'm that kind of white mom that's just like leopard printed roses. Oh my God. <laughs> so of course, so of course I love the, oh, a scrap of paper, oh, aesthetic. You know those shirts that it's like, there's like up here, like the decolletage part is like leopard print and then the bottom of it is like black and then there's like a sparkly gold pocket. I would buy a thousand of those shirts. Another tangent aside, love this palette. Absolutely outstanding palette. If if you want your stereotypical white girl fall palette, th get this before the 35-0. Get this before any Morphe palette. It'll be worth. It'll be less expensive, but be better bang for your buck. I got angry with that last one. I the word Morphe came out of my mouth, and all the rage came with it. Next is an oldie but a goodie, and I may have trashed her earlier on in this video, but it is the Natasha Natasha Denona. Oh God, it is the Anastasia Beverly Hills modern renaissance palette. So I have compared the mauve shades in this to the mauve shades on the Lois Cosmetics palette and they were pretty pretty even. For whatever reason, if you have the Lois Cosmetics palette and you don't have this, or you wanna get the Lois Co Cosmetics palette and you don't have this, go for the Lois Cosmetics palette if you like the greens. If you like the mauves, go for the Natasha Denona Retro. Fun fact, this is one of the comparisons that I did. I won't tell you how it goes, but um, well, here are my thoughts on this palette alone. Uh, there are two shimmer shades and I don't like that. And there are these two, Vermeer and Primavera. But I just, uh, the reason why this is on here is because this is, it's a great formula. 
I think at the time whenever it was released, that was what, 2016, 2017? This, this was the, the palette. This was absolutely the palette. And I don't wanna take that away from her, but we have moved on. We have grown into bigger and better things. And one day this is gonna be like my pan that palette because I'm more drawn to my retro or to my Lois Cosmetics or to like a lot of other palettes that I have over this one. Because even though this isn't like a mauve palette, I think the only thing we could really classify as mauve would be Bon Fresco or maybe Antique Bronze. It still is like, this color story has just, this was the blueprint, but this color story has been done a thousand times over. And now it's it's just not exciting to look at, you know? I also feel like uh, there's too many mattes, honestly. Like Venetian red and antique bronze are kind of like satin mattes. They would be like color pops mattes with pressed glitter, if I'm gonna be honest. So I know a lot of people don't like those, but like, and I do have some heavy dips cause like I have used it, but like, did we really need raw sienna, burnt orange and golden ochre? Did we really need warm taupe and golden ochre and bon fresco? There's so many, uh, uh, Venetian red and love letter. Love letter is just like a more purple and less sparkly version of Venetian red. We didn't need all of this and I can appreciate and respect the history of this palette and how this palette absolutely rocked the makeup world, but I just feel like she has been done bigger and better with time. But that being said, this is the most easily accessible palette that I'm going to be talking about today. Sephora, Ulta, Ed everywhere. Everywhere has this palette. Everywhere has sold this palette like a thousand times at least, you know, in like a calendar year. It's a good palette. It is a great fall palette. It is not my favorite fall palette, but it's a good fall palette. And objectively, that is what I'm looking for. And there she is. I hate, if I'm gonna be honest, the soft, uh, it's like a velvet packaging because it just gets so dirty. My soft glam has like a random blue stain on it. There's no blue in that palette. I don't know how she got there but I've never been able to get it out. But um, yeah, it's it's a good palette. If you don't have Modern Renaissance and you've been looking for Modern Renaissance, and if none of these palettes with similar color stories get to you, get Modern Renaissance. Anastasia's formula is very good, and this is a good palette. I just have too many similar things for it to be my favorite, if that makes sense. You know, I love Lois Cosmetics formula, and I just, yeah, it's, it's all right. It has become all right. Next is a ColourPop palette that actually released on my birthday a couple years ago, and that is the ColourPop Orange You Glad palette. Now, my birthday is in July, so this is very much like, was meant to be a summer palette, but I love doing oranges in fall. And I think that if you wanna branch out into like color, I think oranges are a very safe bet. And I think this palette is good for that, honestly. There is a plus, pr plus, there is a pressed glitter Clementine right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my little baby pan, but I have a little baby pan. Other than that though, there isn't like a matte with pressed glitter in it or a foiled shadow or a super shock shadow or anything that might turn anyone off. There are one, two, two standard shimmers and the rest are mattes other than the glitter. And that's fine by me. I love this nine pan. This was my first nine pan that I ever brought, bought and I used it religiously. I love this palette both by itself and as a companion palette. I'm gonna talk about another palette that I've talked about several times that I have to use this as a companion palette with, but this is a very good venture into color. I mean, look at how bright these are, but there's also is like a brown to mute it, that like stereotypical, you know, orange to mute it. The shimmers aren't too like reflective. And even this, this looks like a soft cream thanks to all the oranges around it and like this soft orange background. But if you like have this on your eye, it's kind of like a light orange. It kind of has like an orange zest to it. Oh, that might be why it's named Zested. I'm smart. I love this palette. I think this is a very good fall palette. Like even though it screams summer, I think the warm tones and with the brown, I just, I love this palette. It's a fall palette to me. I probably won't argue with you if you say that's not a fall palette. I will disagree with you in my heart, but in my head, I will know that you are right.
Next is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Ina palette. I feel like I can't talk about fall without mentioning this palette because look at it. Look at it. First and foremost, my most used shade is Trust Issues. You probably It's so bright and reflective, I don't think you can see the dip in the inner corner, but it looks kind of like a reflective white, but it's like a gold with like a white base. Oh my God, it's so, so pretty. Next would be Wigglyse and Zam. I love the shimmers in this palette. Sponsored is kind of like a one of those like green to red duochromes that adds a little bit of fun without being like too outlandish for if you want to, you know, try something new. Lituation, it's kind of like a steely gray with kind of like a purple base. Super interesting. Dolas, it actually is pronounced that. Dolas is a very cool toned gold that I just think looks stunning on any skin tone. It isn't super cool to where it's like green, but it isn't yellow and I just, this is a great palette. And funnily enough, I've been talking about like in recent videos, how like I want a purple palette. I used um, Supreme Pinker and Big Wig with like a purple duochroma look or two ago. Loved it. And I've satiated my need for a purple palette. I love this palette. I think the color story is like dark enough, but also bright enough. It's it's so interesting to talk about like makeup because it's hard to talk about several different like different types of palettes when it comes to makeup because it is hard to like not sound like a broken record but this palette was made to be brown girl friendly so i do have to use orangey glad and maybe another palette or two i can't remember i mostly use orangey glad with it to make it work for me but i don't mind um, this is only available on Anastasia's website right now. I think it's limited edition, so once they're sold out, they like won't be coming back with it. So I would get this while you can because this is an outstanding palette. I'm very, very happy to own it. It still is like a staple and I wish Anastasia would make it permanent because it is, it's... In 2019, when they were coming out with like every palette under the sun, this was like the standout for me. So I think because of the tones, and because of just the looks that you can create, I think that this is an excellent fall palette, excellent palette in general. Look at that packaging with the rainbow crocodile print. Ah! Next is my ColourPop Costa Coral palette. Now I did a palette comparison between this and ColourPop Sweet Talk palette about a year ago, I think over a year ago now, and um, a lot of people really liked it, surprisingly. My main difference was that Sweet Talk was a little bit more brighter that Sweet Talk came out in like the spring, so it's much more brighter and vibrant pinks. Essentially, this was like a very similar palette, if not just more muted and without a pressed glitter. Now there are two matte with glitter shades, so if you don't like those, there's two of them in the nine pan palette, so you'd only really get use out of seven shades. But boy, oh boy, do I love these shimmers. These shimmers are just standout shimmers. This is like a gold with a slight pink reflect, a pink with a slight gold reflect, and then kind of like a duochrome where it could be either or. And I think that that is like the perfect way to put shimmers in such a small, concise palette is to have like one be kind of, one be a little more, and then one be a definite mixture of the two if you're gonna go with gold or trying to combine two shades. Overall, this is a much more like muted version of the Sweet Talk palette, which is one reason why I think it's great for fall. Even these two that look like browns, they pull, they pull really pink, and if you need them to be pinker, Go in with Anemone. Just go in with Anemone. It's, it's, this is a great palette. <laughs> I do think that because this is subdued, it kind of is like the Orange You Glad palette where it's fall, but color. So if you want to incorporate some color into your fall, you have the browns that kind of pull pink. You can add this to make it a little bit more pinker. If you want to use the gold, it has a little bit of a pink shift. That way it's not too much, but gold is still seen as like a neutral. There's this neutral right here that, I mean, it's, how would I describe that? Is it, does it, do you have any pink in you? No, it is literally, I swatched it right there. It's my skin tone. It's just, it's just a nice subdued nude to kind of help mattify everything, kind of keep everything more subdued. So if you want like a fall tone palette, but you love pinks, but you don't know how to wear pinks in fall, totally go with this one. 
Love this palette. Next would be the Juvia's Place Bronze Rustic Palette. This is essentially everything that I wanted out of the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered palettes. I wanted the red, I wanted the camel brown, I wanted the rose gold, and I wanted the bronze shimmer. Why did I spend $65 when I literally could have, uh, if I just waited, I could have gotten this and been just as happy. I actually did compare it to my Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered palette video in the card, but I think this is a stunning palette. The red is there for if you want that pop of color, but if you don't look at that red, camel brown, deepening brown, nude brown, you know, rose gold, and bronze shimmer it is it's kind of like the basic bitch fall palette if i'm going to be i hate to phrase it like that but if i'm going to be honest yeah it's kind of like the whatever palette where it's kind of basic but if you don't want that as many reds but you still want the nudes use this i love the formula of this uh, this is my this is one of my favorite rose gold shimmers i think it's stunning this palette and the pink one that came out with it uh the blushed rose those were like the first juvia's place palettes i'd ever used i just genuinely love them i think these are great outstanding stunning palettes and i really like the formula of them i haven't really used it since that comparison because i just have so many things that i want to do if you want a basic bitch fall palette here's a basic bitch fall palette there's a red for if you want to add a red but there's the can honestly camel brown in the crease darker brown on the outer corner and then blend the bronze shade into it that is the perfect like that is literally as copper eye nude lip as you can get great formula I hate that the shades aren't named, but whatever. But uh, yeah, this is an outstanding, outstanding palette. Great for fall, it's only like 14 bucks. So uh, if you're debating on getting the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered, I'd consider getting this one and the Blushed Rose instead. Next is my ColourPop Off Melrose palette. So this is a neutral and cool toned lover's dream. Here she is. As you can see, there is one glitter. There is also one, two. There's two of those mattes with pressed glitters in them. So if you don't like those palettes, you're gonna be out a fourth of the palette. Just being honest. This is a very fall palette. I tried to do a palette comparison between this one and the Soft Glam, and I wrote down all my notes and like just nothing worked. They were almost there, but not quite, but not enough that I could call it a dupe. So. I'm happy that I don't have two of the Soft Glam palettes, basically, but I do really, really like this palette. So this is that kind of cool-toned, almost green gold. Same with this. It's kind of like so cool-toned, it's almost green taupe. This is one of those like blue to red duochromes that, again, it adds fun, but it isn't like super dramatic, I guess. I mean, some people would say that any duochromes are dramatic. It's just kind of fun if you want to throw that in the inner corner or on the lid for just a little like pop of like whenever you turn your head oh it's different oh you know i don't think this palette is very like brown girl friendly if i'm gonna be honest just because this is very light this is very light and i mean this rose is kind of a light rose i don't know oh i dug my oh i dug my nail into that oh i think that this is a great specifically cool and neutral tone palette for cool and neutral cool i keep why can't I say neutral? I think this is a great cool and neutral toned palette for our cool and neutral toned loving girls. I messed that up again after like the third time of taking it. So I just kind of puckered my lip and made it seem like that's how I was supposed to be saying it. The formula is like your stereotypical, like good color pop formula. I, the shimmer, the shimmers are pigmented. The glitter is gorgeous. I love that glitter. Perfect for the transitioning of the seasons between fall and winter because winter is like all about cool tones if you follow like that side of makeup i kind of do i kind of begin to lean more towards cool tones whenever it starts getting cooler but uh yeah love this palette can't wait to get more use out of this palette whenever i feel like wearing cool tones and let's move on to the penultimate palette that is the ace beauty ace beauty i call Ace Bidet, oh no. Ace Beauté Classical Paradise Palette. It doesn't look like anything to write home about, but I promise you it is one of the more original color stories that I have in my collection. Because I know, I know, you're gonna... Uh, Drew, I see you. You're yelling at me because there's a nude matte 
an orange, a brown, a red, and a violet. But the shimmers are what make it, I promise. Uh, this, this is almost like a sickly green color. I love it. I love mixing like these two together, like this in my crease, this to blend it out. It's so cool. But like mineral, it's like a silver with like a red base. This harvest shade, it kind of is like a bronze, but also like a red. It just looks bronze, but I promise you there's red in there. Sunflower, barley, and hay are like very white toned shimmer, so they look super stark on the eyelid, and it just looks cool. I know a lot of people don't really like Ace Beauté's formula because it is that very dry but pigmented formula so like I cannot use this with a sticky base at all because what's going to happen is like oh I put like the yellow on the sticky base and then I try to blend it out but then there's like a harsh line. You cannot use this with a sticky base it is too too pigmented. If another indie brand whose formula is like that is the Clarity Cosmetics, love that formula but that's what's good for me. I'm just letting you know right ahead that like, if you fall in love with this, but you struggle with like super pigmented mattes or you don't like Fallout, you will not like this. But I love this and I just, this looks like fall. Honestly, this looks like fall in a palette to me. Cause oh, I need to touch this. Like that like taupe, but it like, kind of has like a silver, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. I actually, actually I am crazy. I actually am a little bit crazy, but I think that this, it's kind of is like another like basic bitch color palette. I don't want to say basic bitch again. Uh, this kind of is like another like it, simple like foirés into color. Like if you want an orange, but you don't want to try the all orange palette, but you want a bright orange, there's vegetation. If you want to get into like a red, but you don't want to buy the whole red palette, clay if you want to buy like if you want to try like a yellow oh i'm running out of bat i am running out of battery i forgot to charge this it's gonna be fine i'm gonna be fine and again like the sickly green i love the sickly green sickly greens make my eyes pop it's kind of as like an olive but not because like you blend it out by itself and it starts to look like brown and like i mean this with all the love in the world throw up -y. but blending it out with the yellow is super cool it creates like the, it just i this palette is something special to my heart i did a comparison between this and the raw beauty christy palette and this had like more saturated tones if that makes sense like the red in this one is a true red the red in the raw beauty christy palette is more like an orange red this is like a true like yellow sunflower yellow the yellow in the Christie palette was more of like a marigold. But I think, oh, is that, that, and I think that one's being discontinued too. So if you want something that's like similar enough, you can watch my video and decide for yourself which one you like, but I love this palette. I don't think there's anything, I keep saying like, there's nothing more fall than this palette, but this color story is very, very fall, but colorful fall and I love that. Last but certainly not least is my ColourPop Boudoir Noir palette. I did a palette comparison comparing this one to my Pan That palette, my Good As Gold palette. I'll have that up in the card. I keep pointing over here, but it might actually be over here. I'll figure this out eventually, but here she is. She is very nude and gold and olive. And so to me, I keep saying like, if you want a foire into color, but you don't. This is actually if you want a foire into color, but you don't, because this is most like, there's the camel brown, there's two greens. There's two greens and like a taupe and like a brownish taupe, but it's neutral and cool to, I hate the reflective background, but ColourPop listens to me and put a mirror in this one. Yes, they listen to me specifically. I love this palette. I've used this since my, um, palette comparison and I do really really like it. I still stand by what I said that like you kind of don't need both but I love that I have both because I love this palette. I love olives. I sometimes will get if I want a little bit more green I might dip into um, the Lois Cosmetics palette. I just think that this is a stunning palette by itself. I think that this works very well by itself because whether, whether or not you want to use the greens, there's just so many varieties of shades and tones and formulas. Speaking of formulas, there is a pressed glitter that is Bedtime Story and Vibin is a matte with pressed glitter. 
but that's like two shades out of the 12. So I, again, I can't make that assumption for you, but uh, I think it's okay if you're only gonna like not use two shades. But I love this palette. This is a very stunning gold to olive palette. They released this holiday of last year with their Menage a Moi palette, which I also own, which is more of like a mauve, but like a purple mauve. This is kind of like a nude and gold, but like a green nude and gold. And I, I like it. I love greens. I love green eyeshadow. I love olive eyeshadow. I love gold eyeshadow. I love nude eyeshadow. So this is like everything for me. And I will definitely, definitely be using this more towards the changing of the seasons whenever more cooler tones start to become like more of what I'm looking for. But I don't know if you heard everything pop whenever I put that down, but it kind of sounded disgusting. However, comma, that is everything that I have for you. I have been filming for almost an hour. Don't forget to check out the lovely ladies that I'm collaborating with down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know if you're picking up any of these palettes. I will have everything listed down below, I promise. But let me know if you think these palettes are fall related. And if you don't, let me know why and what you would switch out and... Yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.